The other day I had our state bee inspector come out and spend a little bit of time with all 52, 52 of our colonies. Hey little girls, look at you. So this year we're trying a, a new style nuke box. This is called a Pro Nuke. Um, and so far, so good. Haven't noticed too many issues. I do like the fact that it holds the frames a lot easier than the cardboard boxes. I tend to have the frames slip down in the cardboard boxes versus the Pro Nuke. Now these nukes we created a few weeks ago. I wanna go ahead and check them out and make sure that they are good to go. I've already had a few go to their new home today and I've got a lot more leaving tomorrow. So bittersweet, but it's okay. It's time for them to go on and pollinate a new farm, a new place, a new area. Oh, look at all that nectar. Pollen. I'll show you guys. So you'll see. See that glistening nectar? Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. And then you'll see some pollen packed in there. Now this is definitely one of the smaller nukes since we just made it. Maybe about, I think it was a, going on two weeks, I think. So. I'm just gonna go slow. on you. Oh wow. Beautiful brood. Let's see if I can get, let's see what's going on on the back side. Yeah. I see some nice pollen. Look at all the color pollen. So I have started noticing the gray pollen, which the gray pollen comes from the blackberries. Pretty excited about that. Uh, nice larva. I don't know if you can see. See the white shiny larva? Now, you can see, let's see if I can hold it up. Some day old egg. And some larva. Look at that beautiful little blonde bee right there. <laughs> that one with the pollen on it. Gorgeous. A nice little yellow dot on her. There you go. So really, that is all, all I want to see. She's beautiful. She's blonde. This is a good example of capped brood. So this is all going to be, babe, this whole frame looks great. All right, okie dokie girls, where'd Queenie Pants go? So I know she's on here, so I gotta be very careful when I put her back in. And she's right. There she is. So since she's so since she's on here, I'm going to be very careful. Go ahead and... This one is good to go. I'm going to go to their new home tomorrow. Definitely bittersweet, but I 
can't keep them all. Now the other day we had our state inspector come out and we checked all of our girls and they got a passing flying color inspection, which is great. It always feels so good whenever you have somebody that comes here and you know your bees. I mean, you check your bees, but when you have somebody that is more in, a, in an official status that comes and checks on your bees, it feels really good to know that they've gotten a clean bill of health and you get a nice piece of paper that says, your bees are good to go. In order for us to be able to sell our bees, I have to have the state inspector come out and look at all of our girls, which I'm very happy that everything went as good as what it did. We had a very lovely day here and it was just fun, you know? And that's one thing I wanna share with you guys when it comes time for you to possibly have to call on your state inspector. Don't be afraid, you know? They're there, they're a resource. That is their job, that is their passion or else they wouldn't have that position. But I don't want you to stress too much when it comes to having that relationship with your state inspector. It's very important for you to have that relationship. One, because you will be able to know what's going on in your area. Two, they're there, they're a resource. And if, God forbid, if I had something that I really needed an extra set of eyes on, I could always call them and, and get them out here to come and look. But knock on wood, the girls have just been absolutely amazing. And um, I'm just very grateful that I was able to experience that day here in the apiary with a, with a state inspector that's been doing this for over 30 years. I told him how proud I was of these girls for sure. Let's go check one more nuke really quick before it gets too, too hot. Girls, okay. You are an A++. So you guys can tell the difference between the two, obviously. Um, this would definitely be an A++. They are ready to go. And so tomorrow I'm very pumped to be able to uh, send them off on their new home. Look, they're already starting to draw comb up here. Oh boy. I see brood, larva, nectar, pollen, beautiful blondies, beautiful blonde bees. I'll be honest, as packed as this one is, I think I'm gonna close it up. I'm happy with what I see. The day old egg is what I was looking for, you know, and making sure that that queen is here. Um, so yeah, these, I'm good. I think whoever gets this one, they're gonna be very happy. Very, very happy. This is literally disgusting. <laughs> that is sweat that has been dripping off my forehead. Unfortunately, my camera can only do so much in this heat, uh, so I have to be very selective of filming but I went through and I checked all of those nukes and now I am finishing up adding on a couple of honey supers um, up top to some of our some of our bigger colonies but it's getting really really hot so I'm going to show you what I like to do on these hot hot summer days Big black snake, Violet, you're on a big black snake. Seriously, it's right there. You almost stepped on him. Oh, you better be careful. Oh, Violet, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> that was a big black snake. Okay, we leave the big black snakes alone. She was just in there cooling off. This is real life, okay? So when you're a beekeeper, it gets hot. Yeah. 
it's, it's really hot. And this is with a vented suit. Now, I do have an ice like vest that I'll wear on super, super hot days if I have to be in the hives on a, on a long-term basis. I probably should have gotten that ready. Um, but I was only planning on like checking 15 and not, not all of them. <laughs> Even my socks are gross. <laughs> this is some cold, cold mountain water. Oh my God! That definitely cooled me off a good bit. <sighs> Sometimes when your body gets so, so hot and then you jump into that creek, that creek is spring fed, comes off the mountains, so cold. And eventually one day in time, in the next, I don't know how many years, whenever we start tackling some of the other projects, this right here. We need to definitely plan on rehabbing this old pond. My, uh, my son has his canoe that sometimes he likes to come down here at night and uh, catch, catch frogs and go frog gigging. But eventually this whole thing will be back to life. We've got to do a little bit of work. We might have to get some heavy machinery up here, but all of these trees have to come down, unfortunately. Right now I'm actually walking on the, on the dam it's actually pretty deep um, and I'll show you we've been inside of it but it just it needs it needs a little bit of work but how cool would that be to come down here and instead of necessarily jumping in the creek jumping in our jumping in a pond that we can uh, have stocked with fish and come down here and go fishing maybe some catfish <laughs> uh, that I think that would be the absolute dream Right now I'm up on top of the bank and it is definitely pretty low. I think there are fish or tadpole in there. I know there's tadpole, but I'm pretty sure that there are some fish. But I'm about 8 feet, 10 feet, and then when you get into it, it's a good solid like 6 feet, I think, to the center. So it has potential. It just is going to take gonna take us a little bit of uh, some muscle <laughs> and some heavy machinery and some and some research we might have to phone a friend on this project because we've never rehabbed a pond before but but that's not gonna stop us Maggie, are you cooling off too? I know the bees are cooling off, but are you cooling off? Yeah, I know. It feels good. Look at all these girls enjoying a nice drink of water. That's what I do love. On the hot summer days, you come down here and all the bees are just enjoying a nice refreshing drink. Thank you guys for watching and uh, coming along and being a part of this day with me. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.